Hello and welcome to the first lesson in my Android Development Fundamental series. In this series, I hope to explain really just the basics of Android application development so that if any of you have your own app ideas, you're able to quickly mobilize them into your own Android applications. And in this first lesson, a simple introduction, I would first like to address some things that I believe you should do before continuing through the rest of this video series, such as familiarizing yourself with Java. I'd also like to address some of the main components of every Android application so we can talk about them and get a really basic understanding of Android development. And then finally I'm going to give an Eclipse IDE or Integrated Development Environment Overview. This is what we're going to use to create the applications and it's what I'm going to be using throughout the remainder of the video series. So if you do want the most relevant experience I recommend you go ahead and download the Eclipse IDE. So to get started here, let's talk about some of the things that I recommend you do before continuing through this video series, if you haven't already. I strongly recommend a background in Java. All of the Android applications that we're going to be writing and all the tutorials I'm going to be demonstrating will be written in Java. I'm going to be using a lot of Java syntax that you may not understand if you don't have a foundation in Java. And uh, it's absolutely critical to Android development. Many people think that there's a specific Android language for applications, but that's not the case. It's actually all written in Java. I'd also recommend having the Android SDK installed. In fact, if you want to follow along, you're going to have to have the Android SDK installed. And I'm not going to go over how to do that, simply because I believe there's already an abundance of tutorials online on how to do that. I'd also recommend having the Eclipse IDE installed. This is of course optional, you could do it in your own text editor if you'd prefer, but if you want to follow along screen by screen, you're going to have to have the Eclipse IDE installed. Finally, this is more of an optional recommendation. I would say a familiar familiarity with XML would be really useful for seeing Android development for the first time. I personally never had this understanding of XML before going into the development process and I was a little confused at first by seeing the XML hierarchies and everything so if you want to really cover all the bases go ahead and familiarize yourself with XML. If you'll notice on the screen here I've placed a link on each of the recommendations for those of you that haven't really closed out any of these prerequisites yet. You can go ahead and click on that link and it will take you to either the software download or what I consider to be the best first step in learning that topic. But for those of you that have completed these prerequisites, let's go ahead and start discussing some of the main components of the Android application. And I've went ahead and made a really simple Android application, which you can see on the right in the emulator here, to demonstrate some of the main components in real time. But this first component is a view. A view in Android is really anything that you see on the screen. So for example, this Android image here, this edit text field is a view, even these buttons is a view. It's also really important to notice that the entire space of the application is a view. So there's a whole bunch of nested views which end up displaying the activity. An activity is really just a functionality in an app. So, for example, a login screen would be an activity, and after you pass the login screen, the main menu screen would be an activity. And you'll notice I'm using the word screen almost interchangeably, and you can think of it like that. Each screen is a new activity. Another analogy I like to use often is an activity being the puppeteer and the views being the puppets. So yes, your activity is going to be controlling what these views look like and how they interact with each other. And of course, it's also going to control what happens when you click buttons and interact with the UI components on the screen. The third item I'd like to demonstrate is an intent. An intent in Android is very similar to an intent in real life. So, for example, if you were driving on the highway and you wanted to switch lanes, if you just switched lanes immediately, you'd probably cause a lot of chaos if you, of course, didn't check your mirror. The more appropriate way to handle that situation is to first broadcast your intent to the other drivers by using your blinker, and then switching lanes. It's very similar in Android. An intent is a communication standard between activities. We're going to use that definition for our intents and purposes right now. So an intent is a simple way to interface with the Android operating system 
to tell it how to handle the requests that you're giving it. So in our example here, if we're going to switch activities, we'll do that using an intent. We'll tell the Android operating system that you want to switch to a new activity, and it will know how to handle that once we give it all the appropriate information. So this is an activity, and when we click the button, we start a new activity. Of course, we can click the button to go back to our previous activity, and this is all done using intents. It's passing information between activities through the Android operating system. The final main component that you're going to see very frequently in Android development is in context. And this is, again, very similar to context in real life. For example, if someone was to run up to you and give you a present, you'd probably be very confused. However, if it was your birthday, then you'd have some context behind that situation and you'd be able to understand how to react appropriately. Now in Android, context is just a lot of meta information about the current state of your application and the phone itself. And it gives the Android operating system a clue as to how to react to certain API calls that you're making with the system. So an example I have dem to demonstrate here is this toast notification. And many of you have probably seen toast notifications before, much like you're seeing at the bottom of the screen here. But in order to make this to toast notification happen correctly, we have to provide a context. We have to tell the Android operating system that this is the current activity I want this toast notification to display on top of, and it knows how to handle the notification. So those four would be the main components that I consider to be the most critical components to an Android application. You have views, which are controlled and manipulated by activities. We can switch between activities using intents and perform some of the more advanced functions that the Android system has to offer by using context to give the system an understanding of what you want to do. And now I'd like to jump into an Eclipse Integrated Development Environment Overview so that we can start to build a familiarity with the tool that we're going to be using to develop these Android applications. Now this here is the Eclipse Development Environment. And at first it might look intimidating with all these panes and all these buttons, so let's break it down by section. And the first section I want to draw your attention to is this big white space here. This is where our code editor is going to be. So this is where we're going to be manipulating the code to bend it to our will, and it's also where we're going to be changing some of the UI layouts for the various screens that we're going to have. Now this section over here on the right is simply the package explorer. This is where you'd navigate the project hierarchy that represents your Android application, open your new activities, and also manipulate some of the resource files that you have associated with your application, such as images and audio, mp3, or mp4 files for video. And finally, down here in the bottom, we have the console view. I'm currently displaying Logcat, which gives us a view into what's going on inside our Android emulator. This is superb because whenever the Android application crashes, there's going to be a stack trace that gets pushed to Logcat, and we can view it right in here. To have Logcat appearing for you in Eclipse, simply go to Window up here, click Show View, and scroll down to Other, and then once you see this hierarchy, you want to expand Android and click Logcat. Not the deprecated one, just the one above that there. And click OK, and it will show up down in your console pane. And that is really all I had for this lesson. As I said previously, it was supposed to simply be a simple introduction so that in the next lesson we can jump into creating our first Android project and really get into the nitty gritty details of both the Eclipse editor and the Android development process itself. So until that time, I want to thank you all for watching and I hope you tune into the next one. Take care everyone.